the name of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, Breakthrough family. Good morning, On behalf of God and his servant, I welcome you to our last day of our prayer and fasting of the seventh month. Better the end than the beginning thereof. Be expectant of the blessings of the end. Amen. Amen. And the Bible speaking in the book of Psalms chapter 118 and verse number 23 says, This is the day which the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. God has given us another day to rejoice and be glad in it. I want us to jump up on our feet and give him thanks for giving us this day, for making us glad, for causing us to see this new day. Let's just give thanks to God, Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. For giving us this new day to rejoice and be glad in it, we say thank you. For causing us to see this wonderful day, for causing us to see this great morning, we say thank you. Lord, we slept and we awoke because you sustained our lives. We return to say thank you. For your faithfulness upon our lives, we say thank you. For your good hand upon our lives, we say thank you. Father, receive all praise. Lord, receive all honor. Receive adoration. We return this morning to say thank you. Lord, we give you all glory. Thank you for your goodness upon our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness upon our lives. Lord, receive all praise. Receive honor. Receive adoration. Thank you, that I am. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that we give thanks. And the Bible speaking, the book of Exodus, chapter 19 and verse number 18, it says, And on Mount Sinai was altogether on smoke, because the descended upon it in fire 
and the smoke thereof as ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. That is because the presence of God was mightily present there. I want us to go before the Lord God and ask him, Father, release your awesome presence in this gathering in a mighty way. Let's call for his awesome presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call for your mighty presence, Lord. Honor us the awesome presence in a mighty way. Oh, Father, honor us the mighty presence. We have gathered to meet with you this morning. Father, come down and meet with us. Honor us the presence in a mighty way. We call for awesome presence. Father, show us your presence. Everywhere that you are gathering this morning to call on your name. Father, honor us the awesome presence. Honor us the awesome presence. Lord, honor us the awesome presence. In the name of Jesus, we call for awesome presence this morning. Thank you, faithful Father. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray and believe. And the Bible speaking in the book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse number 5, it says, Gather my saints together unto me, those who have, have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now let's go before the Lord, going to ask him, Father, as many that you've ordained to worship you this morning, Father, gather them upon this medium. Lord, gather them in large numbers. Go before the Lord God and call for multitudes. Father, in the name of Jesus, as many that you've ordained to worship you this morning, I ask you, Lord, to gather them in large numbers. Gather them in large numbers this morning. There are people that you've ordained to change their lives. Father, gather them, Lord, upon this medium in large numbers. Gather them in large numbers, Lord. The ones that are still asleep, Father, he stand to them and wake them up. Father, gather them in large numbers. The people that you've ordained, Father, to transform their, transform their lives. Father, gather them in large numbers this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify thy name. We give you all glory. We give you honor and adoration. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And in Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 31, the Bible says, For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which is more with the Lord. We're going to go before the Lord, going to ask him, Father, as your word comes forth this morning, beat down every Assyrian in our lives. Go before the Lord, go and talk to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your word comes forth this morning, Lord, beat down every Assyrian. Let your word scatter every Assyrian in our lives. Beat down every Assyrian in our lives. As your word comes forth this morning through the mouth of your servant, Lord, beat down every Assyrian. Whatever does not glorify you in our lives, let them be beaten down by your word this morning. The word that you are sending for this morning, Father, let it beat down every Assyrian in the name of Jesus. Anything that does not glorify you in our lives, let them be beaten down by your word that is coming for this morning. Father, we say thank you. We glorify thy name. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray and believe. And finally, I want us to go before the Lord God and ask him to anoint his servant afresh. Ask him to touch the mouth of his servant with his right hand. Go before the Lord God and call for a fresh anointing upon his servant. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your servant comes forth to minister your word, we ask you to anoint him afresh this morning. We call for a fresh anointing, Lord. We call for a fresh anointing upon the head of your servant. Anoint your servant afresh this morning. Anoint your servant afresh this morning. Uphold your servant with the right hand. Give your servant the tongues of the learned. Lord, anoint your servant afresh. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, mighty King. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray and believe. Let's give God thanks. Yes, had our prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, say thank you. Lord, we glorify thy name. Receive all praise. Receive honor. Receive adoration. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that we give thanks. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody lift up those hands and worship him. There is no one like you, Jesus. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. There is no one like you, Jesus. You deserve all the glory. Glory, worship you. Glory, worship you. You deserve all the glory.
permission to stay. You alone deserves our praise. Lift your voice and worship him. He is in this place today. Father, we worship you. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, Father, for your awesome presence. Lord, we appreciate you. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' great name, we have worshipped him. Covenant-keeping God, we thank you this morning. We exalt your name because you are worthy. Thank you, Father, for the strength renewal that has been on in our lives since Monday. Thank you, Father, for the necessary adjustment that you've been making our, in our lives in the realm of the spirit that will soon manifest in the physical. We give you praise today, Lord Jesus, in this covenant day of empowerment. Lord, have your way, oh God, and let the service find a practical expression in our lives. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. New glory. New glory. Hallelujah. Amen. On the behalf of God and his servant, it is my joy this morning to welcome every one of you to today, uh, Covenant Day of Empowerment Sunday online service here in Breakthrough Chapel International, Mombasa, Kenya. And the good news is that today also happens to be the last day of the prophetic fast of the seventh month. Amen. It has been a great time in his presence. In John chapter 7 verse 37, the Bible says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me to drink. I am sure we have come with our different vessels today to be able to drink from the Lord, not just to drink for now and to also collect a portion that will keep us fresh through the journey. That's why we'll be going ahead to give thanks to the Lord. As individuals, we'll be thanking God for the specific blessings that we have received since this prophetic fast began. It has been empowerment for unusual exploit and I'm sure there are specific blessings that you have received today being the last day you will be thanking him in Psalms 115 verse 1 the Bible says not unto us O Lord not unto us but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth sake will be thanking the Lord for specific blessings. I don't know them, but you know them. Go ahead and begin to mention. Give him thanks this morning for the specific blessings that we have received in our lives. Lord, we thank you this morning. It has been a mountain of renewal of strength for an unusual exploit. Father, thank you for strength. Thank you for the unusual favor that I've enjoyed throughout this week. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank Thank you, Father, for the additional of year to my years. I give you all the glory for the specific blessings that you have received as a family. Give him all the glory. Specific blessings in our families since the fasting began. Go ahead and begin to mention those specific blessings that came our way from day one of this prophetic fast. Lord, we give you thanks. The specific blessings in our businesses, the specific blessings that came to us as a church. Lord, we give you thanks for not for, for, for for multiplying the number of our online viewers since the prophetic fast began. We give you all the glory. We are not taking any of these blessings for granted. We lift our voice to thank you for the specific blessings, oh God, that will lead us, Father, to an unusual exploit in our lives. Father, thank you. Specific blessings. We are able to hear your voice clearer than before. Lord, we thank you. Receive all the glory. In Jesus mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. We'll be going ahead to thank the Lord, to say, Father, thank you for divine enablement for full participation in the prophetic fast, for divine enablement to fully be part of the 
those that observe this prophetic fast. There are many that desired to do it. But let me tell you, day one, they forgot, they ate. Day two, they just gave up. But as for you, you have been able to persist from day one. Today is the seventh day. Why not go ahead and give thanks to the Lord for divine enablement, divine enablement to so many of us for full participation in this prophetic fast. Lord, we thank you for divine enablement, divine enablement. Lord, we give you thanks from the depth of our heart for divine enablement for divine enablement let's thank the Lord for his undiluted word that came to us through his servant Father thank you for your undiluted word that you fed us with throughout this seven days prophetic fast Lord we give you all the glory we exalt your name Father for your undiluted word that you favored us with through your servant Lord thank you for your fire that you kept up less on the altar receive all the glory Lord in Jesus mighty name we have prayed let's lift our voice to heaven as we give glory to God for answered prayer let's exalt his name he has received our thanksgiving thank you father in Jesus mighty name we have given thanks let's remain standing hallelujah praise the Lord in that same mode of prayer, we are going to continue with our prayers this morning, and we are going to, sp to say a prayer for the ministers. A prayer for the ministers. Let us open our Bibles in the book of Psalms, chapter 104, and I shall be reading verse 4. We shall be reading verse 4 of Psalms 104. The Bible says, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. We are going to go before the Lord and pray in this manner. Lord, kindle a new fire upon all the ministers that serve along with your servant. Kindle a new fire upon all the ministers that, that serve along with your servant. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Kindle a new fire fire upon all the ministers uh, that serve along with your servant. Uh, Father, Lord, kindle the fire. Lord, fresh fire upon all the ministers uh, that serve along with your minister. Lord, Father, Lord, revive their fire. Revive their fire. Kindle their fire. Let there be a fresh fire upon every minister who is serving alongside your servant. Uh, Lord, you brought them to your servant. Father, kindle their fire. Lord, let there be a, fire, a new fire in them, Lord, for serving you. Lord, Father, kindle a new fire upon all the ministers that serve along with your servant. Fresh fire upon them, Lord. Let there be a fresh fire upon every minister that is serving along with your servant. Father, kindle a new fire upon all the ministers that along with your servant and give them a new strength Lord, give them a new vigor Lord, a fresh fire upon all who are serving alongside with your servant Father Lord we thank you we appreciate you Lord we give you all the glory thank you Father thank you precious Jesus in Jesus mighty name we have prayed the good Lord is going to kindle a new father fire upon every minister serving along with the servant of God in the name of Jesus Christ let us open our Bibles in the book of Revelation we shall be reading verse 1 and the Bible says after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was it was it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show and I will show thee things which must be after hereafter things which must be hereafter we shall be praying Lord 
keep the heavens over your servants open for fresh revelation in delivery of the assignment. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, keep the heavens over the, over your servants open for fresh revelation in delivery of the assignment. Keep the heavens over your servants open, Lord. Keep the heavens over your servants open for fresh revelation in delivery of their assignment. Open the heavens over your servants, Lord. Let the heavens over your servants be open for fresh revelation, new revelation, higher revelation, Lord. Oh, in delivery of the assignment, Lord. Keep the heavens over your servants open for fresh revelation in delivery of the assignment, Lord. Open the heavens above, Lord. The heavens, Lord, for new revelation. The heavens, Lord, for fresh revelation. Father, Lord, as they deliver the assignment, Lord, give them new revelation. Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's go before the Lord and appreciate him. He's a faithful God. He's a, he's a faithful God. He's a prayer answering Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Next prayer point, we're going to be praying for a spirit of excellency. Spirit of excellency. First Kings chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. First Kings chapter 10, I'm reading verse 4 and 5. Bible says, and when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendants of, of his ministers and their apparel and his cup bearers and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. Going to be praying in this manner, Lord, improve our online service delivery with a touch of excellence. Lord, improve our online service delivery with a touch of excellency. Lift up your voice as we begin to pray. Everlasting Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, my Father, my God, I pray, help us to improve our online service, oh God. Lord, I pray, help us to improve our online service delivery, oh God. Thank you, my Father, for this new platform, oh God. I pray, help us to improve, oh God. Help us to improve on our delivery. Delivery with a touch of excellence, your God. My God, where we have not done very well, help us to do very well. Where we are doing well, help us to do it excellently, oh God. That which we need to do, that which we need to improve. Lord, I pray, help us to improve on it, oh God. Help us to improve, oh God. Our serving delivery, oh God. Our online service delivery with a touch of excellency. Lord, I pray, help us to improve, oh God. Lord, I pray, help Help us to improve, oh God. Help us to improve, oh God. Open our eyes, oh God, that we may see what needs to be done, oh God. Help us, oh God, to see, to know exactly what else we can do. Father, that which we need to do in order to improve our services, that which we need to do in order to improve our service delivery. My Father, I pray, help us, oh God, to see it and to implement it. Help us to see it and to implement it, oh God. Help Help us to see it and to implement it, O oh God. Father, we appreciate you. We give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 28. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 28. Bible says, Wherefore, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. He said, Let us receive grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and God 
godly fear. We be praying in this manner, Lord, as we serve you. Let your grace speak that our, our service to you may be acceptable. Lift up your voice and begin to pray the prayer. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, as we serve you, God, we pray for the grace. Lord, we pray for the grace. A grace that will make our service to be acceptable. There is a grace that will make our service to be acceptable. Lord, we pray for that grace. The grace that makes for acceptable service. Lord, we pray for grace that we make for our service to be acceptable. We don't want to serve you for serving sake, but we want to serve you, God. Service that will be acceptable to you. Lord, I pray for the grace to make our service to be acceptable. Lord, the grace to make our service to be acceptable. Father, the grace to make our service to be acceptable. I pray grant it unto us. I pray grant it unto us. I pray grant it unto us that we will not serve you anyhow, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' precious name. Our God is faithful. He has heard our prayer. Let's lift our boy voices as we begin to appreciate him. He's worthy. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. As we have spoken in the ears of the Lord, he has heard. And he has already answered our prayer. In Jesus' precious name. Please, you may take your seat in the presence of the Lord as we take this session of testimony. It's testimony time. It's my privilege to read to you the testimonies of the works of the Lord in the lives of the people. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse number 13, the Bible says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. People of God, things are working for us because God is working within us. And when God works within us, blessings abound. And when blessings abound, we are bound to come back and testify of what he has done. Now, the following are the testimonies of the great works of God in the life of his people. Number one testimony is divine restoration. On Mother's Day, my children surprised me with a beautiful set of airpods as a way of honoring me. One day during my morning walks, I wore them and was using them. I didn't notice that one pair fell off until I got to the office. The distance from my house to the office is roughly three kilometers. I walked back in search of the missing pair on the same route where many other people used for their morning walks exercise and cycling i didn't manage to find it and on the, on the i didn't manage to find it on the first day the following day i set out to search once again this time with my daughter in tow to god be the glory i found the missing pair intact with no damage or scratch where i least expected it it can only be God who kept it and preserved the airport amidst the possible dangers it faced in, on that route. Put your hands together for that testimony. The next testimony. Sorry. Uh, this testimony is from Elder Beatrice Karaoke in Germany. Put your hands together for Jesus. The next testimony is from Brother Daniel Wole Joseph. He is testifying of divine elevation and grace. God bless you, brethren. I have returned to testify of the goodness of the Lord in my life. In the month of June, I started a software development and consultancy company and brought on board a couple of my highly skilled classmates. I want to thank God for putting the devil to shame and elevating us by allowing us to secure a two six figure deal in a span of three weeks from the date of commencement and these are just students they have not yet graduated from university God also gave us grace as a team to be contacted for these contracts as we didn't have a portfolio at that time I want to appreciate God 
for causing the theme of the month of July to find practical expression in my life. He has caused praise and jubilation to be my emblem as the as the contracts are currently running. To God alone be the glory. Let's put our hands together for those great testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. We can make it better for Jesus. As we can be on our feet, please, as we take our hymn for today. In our breakthrough hymn, the hymn is in page number 100, and the hymn number is 96. Named Rejoice in the Lord, let his mercy cheer. In Breakthrough Hymn, page 100, hymn number 96. Rejoice in the Lord, let his mercy cheer. us. Amen. If God be for us, Amen. 
including coronavirus, including corona, coronavirus, nothing shall be against you. Because God is for us. I welcome each and every one of us to this wonderful day. The days of power is the days of deliverance. And I thank God because we have been observing a fast of the seventh month that come with a lot of promises from God. And I want to rejoice with you that you have been part and parcel of it. A man can promise you something and not be able because he's a man. We are limited as a human being. But we have been approaching God that is unlimited. Amen. He made it clear that he has never asked the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Amen. He has power and ability to deliver whatever his seeker asks for. Amen. No matter what it is. Amen. And that's why I congratulate you because your life shall be full of testimony. Amen. Your life shall be full of testimony. Amen. Everything you have asked for, yes, Lord. you will see them manifesting in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the studio and also at home if you are not already seated before I ask you to sit. <laughs> you know my eyes is still watching you at home there. Praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome every one of us Amen. to this wonderful service. Amen. It's a service that you will live to remember. Amen. Can I hear a believing amen? amen? There are services I attended some years and have never recovered from the impact. Every man you see today is shining. It's a product of diversity of encounter. It is my prayer that today shall be added to you as your own day of encounter. Amen. When Paul, it was a day Paul encountered God on the way to Damascus. And we saw the impact of that encounter. Today is just like that day that Paul was traveling. And I believe you will encounter God Amen. in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I welcome all the brethren on our live streaming. I told you it's a new way of doing service now. So don't be in a hurry to hear the preaching. Also wait and let me welcome those who are joining us online. You know, they, 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 we have so many people online this morning. We have Elder Beatrice Karuki all the way from Germany. We have um, uh, Rachel Favor Mwanje. We have Elia Kim. We have Lillian Madeni all the way from U.S. There are so many online this morning fellowshipping with God. We also have Ann Ben. We have Joanne Munga. We have Pastor Sami Malindi. We have our brethren everywhere. We have Edith Mweni. Several of them are online this morning to be part and parcel of this great day. Your blessing will not elude you. Amen. Jennifer Matimba, God bless you. We have also Eliakim, God bless you. The Lord will reach unto you. We have Pastor Daniel from Nigeria. God bless you, all of you. We have Brother David Karanga. We rejoice with what God is doing in your life. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. We have Emily Chemtai. That is Nairobi. We have Joyce Was Washuka. God bless you all wherever you are and connecting with us. Now you give the first offering, which is sharing this... Uh, uh, this uh, program right now come on share right now share endeavor to share with someone evangelize send the word of God be an instrument create a watch party right now 
so that you can be a blessing to others. This platform has offered us an opportunity to do evangelism while we are in a service. Praise the Lord. Make sure you are sharing right now. Make sure, tell your para, God bless you. God bless you. Make sure you are sharing wherever you are. Clara, God bless you. And bless every one of you. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. It is well with your soul. Angi Kimori, God bless you. We thank God for joining us. Annette Mwangi, God bless you. We celebrate the Kimungai. Raphael Machana, God bless you. I celebrate you all. And in the studio, we have a new, a new person in the house today. Uh, he has overcome by prayer the lockdown. He lived very close just in Mutuapa, but uh, he has finally got visa from President Uhuru to come to Mombasa. We have Pastor Judy in the house today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said praise God. It is well with our soul. It is well with our soul. I also want to believe you are getting your anointing ready. Get your anointing oil set very close to you because it's a covenant day of empowerment. Covenant day of empowerment. Praise the Lord. Everybody say covenant day of empowerment. Praise the Lord. Covenant day of empowerment. Covenant day of empowerment. Praise the Lord. It is well with your soul. I say it is well with your soul. What a crowning way. The fast of the seventh month has been a fast with a difference. I can tell you for free. I've encountered God more than ever before. Virtue have gone out. I feel it in my system. And I believe those virtue, according to God's word, they will not return back to God in vain. Amen. They must accomplish the purpose for which he sent it. Amen. Your own delivery shall not elude you. Amen. You will definitely have a testimony. Amen. You will definitely have what? A testimony. Just like our brethren testify, our beloved elder in Germany testify that that thing they are talking about, it has happened to me. I bought one in Nigeria, and uh, I think the third, the second day, it disappeared. Because when it fell, you are not likely to know. Probably one is still working. And for such to have fell on a road in Germany, and you find it is a miracle. When it fell on the ground, you wouldn't know. And then after almost three days, it was found intact. No car have run over it. No cyclist have marched it. And no pedestrian has stepped on it. And no one going to work that have seen it. Praise God. When God hides something for you, no man can assess it. Your blessing shall be hid for you by the Lord. That contract that you need to recover from the losses that COVID-19 tried to bring our way. That one single contract, like the golden fish that Jesus speak and he paid the bill of all and there was left over. God will hide it for you. No one will surcharge this, the process. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I also love the testimony of my son. I've always tell you, you don't have to graduate before you start earning. You know, those of you, some of you fell, I'm too hard on them. Is that I want to enter rest on time. Praise God. I can't use all my life to labor for children. That's not scriptural. Praise God. I said, praise God. I also thank God for that testimony. It elevated my soul. Uh, I always tell him, you are many empesa shop. 
you have heard me saying it, that that boy is more than 20 M-Pesa shop. Because to open an M-Pesa shop, you need around 120. Praise God. <laughs> 120, 120,000, you should open an M-Pesa shop. You know how many 120,000 I've paid since he was born. So if I've been in business of M-Pesa, I will have been reaping. Praise God. I said, praise God. I want to thank God for the consultancy services he started and uh, the wisdom I've imparted on his head and that God have granted him. You don't relate with people for nothing. Gather your friends and start life. And they started it in the midst of the lockdown. They are on the second contract. And you see how clever he is. He just, just is six digits. Praise God. <laughs> the children of this day are very wise. Praise God. But it's in hundreds of thousands. And the two contracts are running. That is the joy of it all. And I pray for every parent online right now. Your children will not graduate before they start working. They won't graduate before they start working. I prayed that one in his life and it has worked. When he finished from four, he got a job. The same way I pray for your children. Your children and my children have the same covenant with Jesus. They will not struggle in, gainfully, in, in getting gainful employment. Amen. Job will look for them Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Now, and today being covenant day of empowerment, we have to get into the business of the day as fast as possible. Praise God. And uh, the title of the day is self-explanatory covenant day of empowerment. First Chronicle chapter 29 verse 11 Psalm 62 and verse 11 Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 are our text for the sermon First Chronicle 29 11 Psalm 62 verse 11 Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. And I take reading of First Chronicle 29. It said, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. Look at the article D in this text. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth are dying dying is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all you see the article D Majesty belong to God. I will tell you what they are pointing to. Other majesty, other power are just agent. The power belongs to God. The majesty belongs to God. The glory belongs to God. The greatness belongs to God. The victory belong to God. So any of these things you are looking for, go to the source. God is the original source of it. It flows from him. It flows from him. You want to be great? Go to God. Because it belongs to him. Psalm 62 verse 11. He said, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard that power belongs unto God. Power belongs unto God. 
Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. Listen to Jesus. All power is given to me. Is given to me. Is given to me. Is given to me. Please take note of those words. Is given to me. You know what the word is given to me? Is pointing, is coming from a source. Don't fear any man that say he will use power against you. Go to the source of power and report him. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Don't be afraid. When the devil threatens your assistant with his fake power, with his deception, report him to the headquarter of power. 1990, sorry, year 2000, uh, to be precise, I think year 2000 exactly, somewhere around February, around, um, I remember I came back to this country in, in uh, Feb uh, in Ma March uh, 2000, March 2000, there about, year 2000, while I was serving under God's servant, Bishop David Oyedeko in Winners Chapel. And then uh, we started uh, the planting and buying of the land. And the man was highly pleased broke the covenant we had with him and he, because he was highly placed in power that be at that time he said he's going to arrest us he said he's going to arrest me and send me back to my country and, and he was saying it to a newspaper and he said when I, I'm traveling now he was saying it at the, I'm traveling now when I come back and that was the last time you see this nation. You don't need to throw bow and arrow. Just go to the headquarter Amen. of power and report anyone that threatening your existence, including Satan and coronavirus. Hallelujah. Report him to God. Amen. Amen. I think that was how he died where he went. Thank God I didn't even have passport there so nobody can trace it to me. I only report to headquarters of power. The power, the power, the majesty, the victory. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me. Let us st stop going to Muganga and Panya Panya Root. Where in Kenya, when we say Panya Panya, we are talking of shortcut or corner corner route looking for power. They are not there. Power belongs to God. And I think for the first time, Satan tried to tell the truth also. He tried. He told Jesus and said, bow down to me. You see, all this thing, all the kingdom and the splendor of the kingdom were delivered to me. He didn't say I created them. Were delivered to me for the first time. He attempted to tell the truth. Even though it was a perverted truth, but there were some element of truth. It was delivered to me. He didn't say I created them. So Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. And I am with you always, even unto the end of the war. Amen. There is something about God and his power. Wherever he gave it to or whosoever he bestowed it upon, he work with them to make sure the power is working and that his power is durable like himself. You know his eternal rock of ages. You can trust his power. I want to establish this. Power does not belong to any government. Power does not belong to any man. As we journey in this teaching, let's get this basis established. Power belongs to God. The power belongs to God. What belongs to us are delegated, what we have are delegated power which can be withdrawn. So don't let anything threaten your existence, your health, the life of your children, your businesses. We have seen it across the nation. As powerful, as strong, the president of the United States of America was, the other day the people that gave him power wanted to take it back. It was God who saved him. We have seen it in our nation here in Kenya. Some party gave some people power. And when the power was uh, misused or they were not satisfied by the usage of the power, they recollected it. Yes, and the men became empty. So anyone threatening you with power, re report him to headquarters. Amen. That's why Paul dared to tell dead, Oh, death, where is your power? Yes. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that their life are being threatening by the sting of death, by agent of death, liver cirrhosis, cancer, HIV, coronavirus, blood, high blood pressure, diabetes. Name it in the name that is above all name. I dismantle those diseases in your system as I report them to headquarters in the name of Jesus Christ. One, one of the politicians in Nigeria, very powerful. He's the chairman of the ruling party. If he tell you you won't win election, you won't win elections. And it's one man. And it's not from your state. It's not from your county. If you say you will lose, you will lose. <laughs> but in the last, in the course of a few weeks ago, he himself was dethroned. Just to prove a point, power belongs to God. What you have in your hand, that's why all of us that are placed in the place of power, please behave gently. Amen. The power can be withdrawn. It's a delegated power. Amen. When you are feeding the poor, feed them with meekness and humility. Amen. Don't think you are doing them favor. Because the Bible tells us it is God that gives the power to get wealth. Haven't established this. We can now ask ourselves what is covenant day of empowerment? What does he mean? You never find what you cannot define. You never have faith to what you are not certain about. That's why faith is not a story. The Bible says faith is a substance. Of the things hoped for, the evidence of the thing not seen. 
and by it the elders obtain good report so an understanding of what covenant day of empowerment is build you a solid faith which become your spiritual hand to receive it from God Hallelujah. and I said to fully understand and comprehend covenant day of empowerment let's attempt to define covenant and empowerment covenant and empowerment those grammar are too big in some quarters so we need to break them down don't preach as a preacher and be excited by the heftiness of your vocabulary. Rejoice that the people understand what you are saying. Because it is in their understanding that they build faith to connect with God and respond to what you are preaching. So let's break those words into pieces that everyone in the kingdom can understand. What is covenant? Covenant can be defined as an agreement, an agreement usually formed between two or more people or persons between two or more people more let me just be straight more person to do or not to do something specific specify it usually an agreement between two or more person to do or not to do something specify to do or not to do something specify it's an agreement which is usually formed between and in most cases it is formal praise god they do get it right now it is an agreement that between you and most of the service provider that they will provide you services and then you will pay for the services. I want to make it very clear. Some allow you to prepay and some allow you to do what? Postpaid. I hope you are hearing me at home. Yes, sir. It is an agreement that bring your child to my school I will give him quality education and you give me the amount of money agree. So covenant is usually formed between two or more person to do and not to do something specified. Today we are looking at the covenant of empowerment. Whether we desire whether to whether it can be given to us or not covenant of empowerment what to do or not to do specified praise god now what is empowerment empowerment can be defined as authority or power endowed or giving to someone to do something. I repeat, it is defined as authority or power. Endow or conferred or giving to someone to do something. When Pastor Eric stood here, it was this ministry that was standing here. Because the moment we say, go and take the testimony, we have given him authority. We have given him power to do it. On behalf of the rest of us. 
As a servant of God, God has given me authority yes, sir. or power this morning to preach to you. Yes, Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, All right. So that I want you to get it because sometimes we go to a heavy meeting and we don't have understanding. And whatever you don't understand, you can't stand on top of it. So your height remains the same. Every service is to make you taller than issues of life. That's why I said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared in Zion. But it is not attendance that gives the strength. It is the knowledge acquired that, that baptizes you with strength. Proverbs 24, I think verse 5. He that increases knowledge increases strength. Every one of us giving power, we have to be careful. We have to know every, in your office you are delegated to attend seminar. You have to be careful. It is power given to you to represent the company. If you abuse it, it will get back to the one who gave it to you. And you will never be recommended. Many people claim that they are denying favor or they are denying lifting in their office. But they don't know why they deny them. You have to say, I've been working for 30 years. I've never even sent on, uh, on course. The number of years won't change the situation. It is your finding of what kind of, what sort of character you possess. Why they are sending order and they are not sending you. You must have abused a delegated authority at one time or the other. Simply they ask you to receive money. Or from a client receive money they didn't say receive his telephone number receive money from a client but after you collected the money you ask for his business card and then you call the man and suggest another product that your company is not selling now you think you are smart no you are not and then the, the one day the man remember you suggested something and he couldn't get your number if God will catch you. Because every unfaithful man will be caught. If we wanted to follow up, he didn't get you. So he felt he's at liberty to ask your boss. So he died. I said, what about that product in your company? The man said, what? He said, which product? They sell tire. He said, no, the bag of rice. <laughs> He said, no, we don't deal in, right, with rice. He said, we, you know, we, deal, we major in tires and tube. <laughs> he said, but your, your boy called me. Wow. And when you are asked, you start lying. So the man just look at you and shake his head. It's okay, it's okay. Maybe it's not you. But he has concluded. Has concluded. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, people don't know why certain people are not given to them. We saw it when Obama came. Somebody was head of, I don't know the rank he was in the government. He went and started taking picture with the <laughs> with what belonged to the whole America. Obama is a Kenyan, but the beast doesn't belong to him. It was, it was, it belonged to that nation. You see how they chase him like a frog. What do you want to do with the picture? What do you want to do with it? We all know the plane came. And if you want to have it recorded that you are standing by, we know you are not the owner. <laughs> and if you want to, can't you give uh, this boys uh, the picture of the, of the, of the beast, the car. Can't you give them the picture and let them do Photoshop work for you and put your picture on it? <laughs> I want to plead with you at home Amen. as a way of digression. It is your season in the body of Christ. Amen. It is our time of elevation. Amen. 
But please, when you are using delegated authority, you must jealously guard it. Amen. You must jealously guard it. Praise God. I believe I'm ministering to someone here. I don't know you, but uh, I think maybe you are not using the power and God wants to lift you. Please use it wisely. So we can now define covenant day of empowerment. Covenant day of empowerment. As a day in which we learn under what the word learn. As a day in which we learn we learn and enter a spiritual agreement with God Five, you like after your learn. We learn, understand, <laughs> and enter spiritual agreement with God. To fulfill his requirement. Or term of reference, like lawyer we say. For the purpose of him giving us his authority and power. His authority and power. Remember, power belongs to him. His authority and power. For the fulfillment of our life and destiny. I like to repeat it. As a covenant day of empowerment can be defined as a day in which we learn, understand, and now enter a spiritual agreement with God. To fulfill his requirement for the purpose of him giving us his authority or power to fulfill our life and destiny. I'm sure that is clear. Yes, it is not a day to sleep, it's a day to be awake. It's not a day to wait till oil is poured on your head. It's a day to learn. Amen. And then have clear understanding of the term of reference. And then spiritually append your signature to fulfill all his requirement for the purpose of him giving giving us his authority or power to fulfill our life and destiny, if you like, you can put on earth. So it's not a day to sleep. It's not a day to be roaming around the church premises like many doors. They roam around, then they are just waiting when the oil... The job is not on the oil. The oil is the stamp. Yes. It's not the document. Amen. The oil is the seal. Yes. So you can have oil on your head, but you don't have the term of reference. And that is where the problem is. Wow. Empty, document. Empty document. You have plain sheet. You carry it in the court. You carry an empty court, an empty paper, and say, see, there's time. They say, what is this? <laughs> you know how funny it will look in a law court. 
you carry an a empty sheet of paper and you have sneaking and the messenger have stamped for you and say, see the document of the company. So what is he saying? <laughs> because the stamp is useless if there are no statement. Yes, and that is what happened in the body of Christ today. People go for anointing service with an empty paper. There is nothing that is in the table of their heart. And God has nothing to anoint. You know he said, write down the vision and make it plain upon the tables. If you look at the table, it's plural. One of the tables of life is the table of the heart. So when we gather in a covenant day like this, it's a day to learn. It's a day to understand. You believe God for spirit of understanding. Because when it dawns on you, compliance will not be difficult. People of God, to serve God is so easy for me. So easy. Not because it was preached to me only. It was because I understood the term of reference. I understood it. I have an understanding that every time I'm privileged to do anything for anybody in the kingdom of God, it's a privilege. I could be also be on the other side. You are counseling somebody and the person is crying in your front. If not for God, the table can change. You will be the one crying on the other side and is the one counseling you. So, so, so I understood. I, I, so I talked to the rich. I talked to the poor. <laughs> you don't need to have money to come for me to serve you. No, 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 no. I know the table, if not for God, the table will be the other way around. So it's a privilege. And I have a, 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 an understanding, a term of reference between me and God. It is not the one I preach to that is to pay me. So your status is irrelevant. I'm not serving you. You are not the one who elects me. You are not the one who engaged me. It is God. I, I pray every pastor listening to me right now, you will understand. Amen. Your congregation are not the one that engage you. So discharge your duty without fear or favor. And we pastor have to make this one known. That somebody is mightily used in financing your ministry. He must not become your God. Love him. What he's doing, he's doing it for the father. In fact, the Bible says he will receive reward from the Lord, not from you. So, so that we help those whom God have raised in the body of Christ, not just to give, but to grow. Please don't mistake giving for growth. You can give for several reasons. You can give to boost your ego. You can give to take the day. Have you noticed when you take offering and you ask people to come out, you get more? I'm talking as a pastor. When you say write, anybody can write 1,000. But when you say come out and tell me how much you are giving, <laughs> everybody wants to defend the status. So don't mistake your giving to God for your spiritual growth. And it is the responsibility of we pastor to pass this knowledge to ourselves and to our member by our conduct. Am I still talking with you? Yes. Are you catching something? So you, you have to understand the term of reference. You know why you struggle to give? You don't understand the term of reference. Do you even know why you are saying, God, you, you gave 5,000 Kenyan shillings and you have not gotten anything? You don't understand the term of reference. God doesn't have to pay you with money. He can pay you by you not spending on your health. Amen. 
I had a message that I will never forget the pastor who preached to me. In our system, that time I was supposed to be a senior, but he ministered to me powerfully. Pastor Luashiki. He said, we don't know how to measure our increase. Hmm? I said, you mean I don't know if somebody give me five, 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 five dollars and I add it to another five. What do you mean? Then when he went further, I said, if you are not having expenses, it's also increase. I said, wow. <laughs> I've never known that. If you are not having expenses, it's also an increase because life demands certain expenses on daily basis. So if you are not getting expenses and your need are still being met, you are also being increased by the law. If you are not in hospital to pay for oxygen or quarantine in one center, God is also blessing you. It doesn't have to be what you give to God. He said we supply your needs. Oxygen is part of your need. Yes, sir. If you remove his hand, your nose can be blocked. Yes, sir. What is the center of COVID-19? It makes people not to be able to breathe well. So when you are breathing well, God is paying you. Amen. So, so I don't look at what I want as my payment because I understood the term of reference. You know why I'm spending time here? That's why some people are anointing service and they will be going. They don't even care whether they anoint them. They are doing blood or sprinkling. They don't care whether the blood touch them. Because they don't understand the term of reference. They are looking for this term instead of reading the document. Yes, the document can be written, you won't get it. Stamp. <laughs> Please ensure that it doesn't get it. Bam. Oh, and he carry it. That will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Haven't understood what empire, uh, what covenant day of anything. If you could covenant day of healing. Yes, sir. Next Sunday is our covenant day of favor. Amen. So, so I'm preparing your heart. Amen. Covenant day of favor. Amen. Now, why do I need empowerment? Because until you know why, you are likely not to delight yourself in the how. Until you know why of a thing, you are likely not to delight yourself in the how. Why do I need empowerment? Why do I need it? <laughs> Let me tell you, people of God, from what we have read, I'm sure anyone listening to me a few minutes ago from, from, from when we started, you can cheaply answer these questions. To be powerless on earth is to be a useless child of God on earth. To be powerless on earth is to be a useless child of God. So we need power. Number two, to be powerless on earth is to be stagnated and malfunction in life and destiny. If you don't have power, you'll be stagnated and malfunction in life and destiny. This point reminds me and gave me a good illustration which I'm going to give you. When I'm in a hurry going to town from our office here, one of the prayers I pray is, Lord, let me find one police escort that is going. Don't follow bank own. They will shoot you. <laughs> the other day I laughed. I was going to, I think we're going, I was going to Malindi. And then as I hit through a member roundabout here, I saw a car, uh, uh, a police escort car going. And it was blowing his siren. Wow. I, I put my head. And I was following him. And then we got a one kilometer, he stopped. You know, those drivers, sometimes when they are in hurry, they engage those things. Yeah. He stopped, he stopped blowing. I was following him. 
Then he noticed that I was following him from the mirror. <laughs> In fact, for your, for your information, I will also do whatever they are doing. Then he was very happy. So everywhere we get to and there is a delay and I can't come out, he will slow down. I follow him till I get out of the town. You know what surprised me? When he got to where he will branch, he waved me. <laughs> I said, so this guy, no. No wonder anywhere it looked like they are trying to block me. He will slow down and blow. I said, God. If you don't have power, the traffic of life will delay you. The traffic of life will delay you. That is why many people never have access to early success. What we're supposed to have done 20 years, we are still struggling now. You know why? We don't have power in that direction. So that's why I said, to be powerless on earth, is to be stagnated and malfunction in life and destiny. Why do I need empowerment? Number three, it takes empowerment to be in charge and have dominion, which is our principal reason for existence. It takes empowerment to be what? To be in charge and have dominion, which is our principal reason for existence. You remember that in Genesis, and God said to them, let them have dominion. Do you know God never talk of fruitfulness until I have talked dominion? The next point. It, all, it will only take empowerment for you to be able to rule in the midst of your enemies. And they are there. Psalm 66 and verse 7. Psalm 66 from verse 1 to 7. We all need empowerment. Look at the traffic of life. Look at the enemy of life, such as coronavirus. He has maimed some family as we speak. I was watching a man who lost, a, 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 a woman who lost her husband and uh, the grandmother. It just, it's just the way it, it happened, there are about five in the house. No traces of her engagement in marriage with that family. The in-law died, the child died, the husband died. So he's back to single life without nothing to show for it. Enemies are everywhere. Yes, sir. And you don't need to offend them. They are higher by hell. Mm -hmm. So we need power. So in Psalm 66, say, make a joyful noise unto God, all ye land. Sing forth in the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Come and see the work of God. God never had work until he had power. He's terrible in his doing towards the children of men. Verse 6 says, he turned the sea into a dry land. The sea wanted to, wanted to hinder and put a limitation to his intention and purpose towards the children of Israel. He used his power to turn the sea into a dry land. They went through the flood on food. They did, there did we rejoice in him. He ruled by his power. How long? Forever. His eyes behold the nation. Let the rebellious, let not the rebellious, talking to Satan, exalt themselves because he will descend on them with his power. You need power. I need power. And God will grant it to us today. 
I said, we cannot maintain relevance and significance without spiritual empowerment. We cannot maintain relevance and significance. And you know, that is what God created us for. He created us to walk, to be relevant, to be useful or not. And to be significant, we are the lights of the world. Now, you can't do all that. In other words, you cannot be valid on earth without divine empowerment. Remove power from the life of a man, he has expired. He has expired. You will not expire. I'm talking to someone that in the name of Jesus, the power of God that is coming on your hair, upon your life after this ministration, we position you and makes you relevant. The whole earth will be looking for you. And you will be significant. You will be outstandingly outstanding in all your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's why you see when people have power, they become fatter. And it's not that they are eating food. No, they don't. It's poor man that eat in Arian in advance. Powerful people don't eat a lot. Check, even in government. Anyone you know that enter government for years that doesn't increase in size. There are very few. Have you seen a poor man say he's going for exercise? <laughs> that he wants to lose weight. <laughs> it's, a, it's powerful people that lose weight. Because there is a piece of, you know, you don't grow naturally 100% by what we, by reason of food. Rest of mind, because you know you are in charge. It has a way of, of adding weight, adding flesh to your bone that you are in charge. Nobody is making trouble. The Bible says a great king has a, a king who no one is rising against. I saw the, God, the president of Tanzania when he came to power. I won't mention the other one because I'm in his nation. But you can see his size. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You understand? Look, tell me someone who is in power that doesn't, except if the economy is not doing well and there are trouble. But if he has enough power and is in charge, they become fresher. I pray for you that your destiny will, re will receive a fresh look after this service in the name of Jesus Christ. A fresh look, a glorious look. That's why we need the power. That's why you must care for it. We cannot maintain relevance and significance without spiritual empowerment. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 said it all. He said you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And suddenly you that were non-entity, you will begin to witness of me. Both in Jerusalem in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of it. You know what power does? Pa power makes you relevant, irrespective of your, of your nativity. Power makes you what? Relevant. In, uh, in, uh, uh, in what? Irrespective. irrespective of your nativity. When you become the president of this nation, nobody wants to know you come from Udani. You are the center of life. When you arrive at America, Trump will stand up yes. and greet you. But you know you are coming from Udani. Nobody address you with Udani anymore. They address you, he left the state house today. But you are not from the state house. But power makes you to be there. I see a new day for you. Yeah. I see a new thing happen for you. Yeah. Now source of empowerment source of empowerment. From what we have read in Psalm 62 verse 11, God is the authentic source of empowerment. God is the authentic source of empowerment. Therefore, he has the prerogative right to draft a contract or agreement 
with anyone who desire to share out of his power or who desire for him to give them authority to use his power. I'm sure that is clear enough. He has the prerogative power because he's the source of power. So he has the prerogative right to draft spiritual agreement with anyone or contract to enter into an agreement or contract with anyone who desire to share. Who desire to share with him his power or who desire that he might give them the privilege of using his power. <laughs> you saw in, in, you can put on that there, you can cross check with John chapter 7 from verse 37. You know what he said? He said on that last day of the feast, he cried, Jesus cried, and said if any man pass, let him come. Out of his belly shall flow rivers. But you know, he gave his condition. What is the condition? Whosoever believe as the scriptures say. Don't carry your belief to here. Whosoever believe as the scripture. That is the book of the agreement. The term of reference. If you agree, come and sign in. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Praise God. I said praise God. Is somebody getting blessed? If you are getting blessed, wave your hand at home and say thank you Jesus. He's the one giving you that understanding. And this began to be confirmed. What must I do? Having understand God is source of empowerment. What must I do for me to be empowered? What must I do? I quickly give you this short understanding. Empowerment, as we have moved across it this morning. Is a great asset to every man's destiny. Therefore, it comes with a cost. Everybody say cost. cost. Everybody say that cost. cost. From the village where I come from, they said there is no market where it is valuable and it is cheap. No. Anything of value attracts higher price. If Jesus has to pay price for empowerment, you and I cannot get it for free. We need to pay the required price. Therefore, the following are the requirement or price for divine empowerment. The following are the what? The following are covenant requirements or price for empowerment. Number one, you must be born again. You must have a point of connection with divinity. For you to operate in the realm of divinity, you must exchange your humanity for divinity. You must be born again. Everybody that is born again say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you want to be operating as a divinity then you must put off humanity. Amen. You must be born again. You must, you must give your life to Jesus Christ so that you can now put the power inside it. You must receive him. You must accept the work of Calvary. 
You must recognize it and appreciate it to the point of subscribing for it. Amen. That you go to church does not mean you have subscribed for it. Because when you enter supermarket, it doesn't mean you make purchase. John chapter 1 verse 12. We all know that scripture. But as many that has heard about him. As many that go to his house. As many that have received him. Past tense. To them he gave power to become the son of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Not that know his name. Believe in his name. Am I making sense here? Yes, and this is very true. No one empower a stranger. Somebody just say, I'm passing by and I'm tired. You say, come into our house. And then when you enter our house, say, this is the key to my safe. Go and sleep in that room. I'm going out. Do you do that? No. Nobody empower a stranger. Therefore, become a child of God. Then his power automatically show up in your spiritual DNA. Automatically show up in your spiritual DNA. Did you understand that? Have you, those of you are parents, have you, which, which time did you teach your children to resemble you? Just come on, but slowly. Come on, slowly. Did you understand what I'm saying? That my daughter, this is how I walk. So walk like that. This is my look. Be pressing your cheek till it look like mine. <laughs> no. It's your DNA. There is a gene from you in her. As that gene is growing, it naturally develops her to become like you. So when you become a child of God, the power that belongs to him that is in your DNA. Hallelujah. And as you walk in obedience, it becomes to grow and grow and grow. It's not the day I got saved that I lay hand, barrenness was broken. No, as I was growing the law, the DNA, that divine enablement to walk signs and wonder and miracle. Remember I say, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for sign and for wonder. So as you are part of his children, you begin to exhibit his power. Amen. Do you know if the, if the son of the president is walking in town, he wants people to leave road for him. Praise God. He's not asking for too much. It's in his DNA. Praise the Lord. So you must be born again. And at this point, if you are not born again, you are robbing yourself of the power of God. By the time I make it utter call, please endeavor to give your life to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Become a child of God, then his power automatically show up in your spiritual DNA for manifestation. Praise the Lord. Number two, kingdom service. Are you, I hope you are understanding the term of agreement now. The point of reference, the contract, the thing you should agree. Kingdom service. God save you to use you. Accept to be a servant in his house. I put in my notes here, a servant does not beg for empowerment. A servant does not what? He does not beg for assignment uh, for empowerment. If there is a duty to perform, the power to perform it must be given must be given to him. People who work for God and the advancement of his kingdom are naturally empowered to discharge their duty. Oh, The power to minister to you now, the way I'm feeling now, wasn't there when I woke up from my bed. But if there is a message of God to pass to his people, the messenger must be financed. He must
must be financed with unction to function. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Are you seeing the time of reference? And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, what did he do? The disciples begin to roll on the floor? No. What did he do? He gave them bread. Them, Demon would have slapped the disciple. We don't cast me out by bread. He gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. The disciple didn't need to beg. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Have you seen the lineage? So look at what to do in the kingdom of God. Ranging from financing the kingdom of God, singing in choir, doing evangelism, sanctuary keeping, using your influence to represent the, the kingdom of God in governmental institution. God will just naturally empower you. Praise God. I said praise God. Number three, I've dealt with it. In the earlier part of it, it came on its own. So I dealt with it there. Be a faithful personality in the kingdom. Be a faithful personality in the kingdom. Empowerment requires a faithful custodian. A faithful custodian. I talk about it at the earlier part. No one will empower you until they can boast of your faithfulness and loyalty. You remember I mentioned it at the early part? Be faithful. Every assignment committed to you, know that it is a, the, carrying it out is a, is a key in your hand to open another assignment. Be faithful. And then, Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. I want us to read it very important. You will be empowered. Wherever you walk for, you will not be a slave there. Amen. You will be so faithful that power will be trusted into your hand. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will empower you. Amen. Are you in Nehemiah? Yes. Chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. If you are there, he says, Now it came to pass. When the wall was built, and I have set up the door, and the porter and the singer and the Levite were appointed. That I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace. They gave them the ruler of the palace. That's empowerment. Charge over Jerusalem. Why? For he was a faithful man and fear God above all. He was a faithful man. That was why he was that is why they were empowered. Number four. Holiness and righteousness. Holiness and righteousness. Psalm 45 and verse 7. I hope we are seeing the time. Today, I am too sure. <laughs> Another dimension of power. Is flowing to our life. Can I hear your resounding amen? Can I hear your resounding amen? Are you there? Psalm 45 verse 7. Psalm 45. I want all of us to be there. Righteousness is not to approve yourself before men. It's to approve yourself before God. And you can't be approved by God and men disapprove you. Are we there? What did he say? He was talking about Jesus. He said, Thou loves righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellow. Remember, power belongs to God. So the power for our empowerment is coming from the Holy God. So the power is holy. 
and therefore it will require a holy human vessel for storage otherwise it will evaporate did you understand that the, the one giving the power who own power is holy so the power that we are looking unto God to receive for an empowerment is a holy power therefore it will require a holy human vessel did you understand me that is I must be holy if I must receive a holy product and I said otherwise it will what it will evaporate you can't fetch water inside basket it will disappear that is how every act of unholiness drain us of empowerment from this scripture God measured the grace of our holiness to determine the level of our empowerment our empowerment will always be rated over our holiness or righteousness. Therefore, let us keep on testing after righteousness. If it is wrong, it is wrong. Call for grace to be right in that area. You may justify it, but you cannot confuse God. He will measure your level of holiness or righteousness to determine the level of of the empowerment of his that he confound you. Praise the Lord. And finally, be knowledgeable and embrace, listen to this, I will dictate it for you, be knowledgeable and embrace the engagement of divine instrument of power. Be knowledgeable and embrace the engagement of divine instrument of power such as fasting giving prayer holy communion mantu ordinances prophetic declaration and the mystery of anointing oil be knowledgeable. Take your time. Get book and set aside the day. Lord, what is this mantle that they are talking about? Get the teaching material of men of God who have depth of understanding. Not those who are debating it. The Bible says everything in the Bible are written for our example and admonition. Some people will tell you that you know mantu was only used one, so it cannot be used now. I thought the Bible said God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, if you want to argue scripture, there are, there are enough. But they say all these things that are written are for what? For our admonition. Why are you admonishing me if it's useless? Somebody tells you nothing is a mantle. They are just nonsense. Jesus have died and what? And Jesus said, I have not come to rubbish the law. <laughs> Please don't listen to argument. Take your time to take a research. Take your time to do what? To take a research. What God revealed to you is for you. It's not for debate. How can somebody now tell Wally and say there is nothing called mantle? It's because it hasn't worked for you. But it has worked for me. Mama is here. A, 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 a noble man in her family said, our wedding cannot take place. You know, there are members of the family that make decisions. He was a commissioner. He said, the wedding can't take place on that place. He was very angry. I told mama, let's go and see. Come over. Come from the city where you are. Because you don't rubbish people all the time. You can't rubbish him. He's a member of the family. If they didn't bring you up well, I can't find you. There are places you don't bind devil. You show power. So I told mama, please come. Take holiday from your banking work and come over. And when she came, I tie mantle on your neck. And I carry my own. I said, let's go to his house. 
he has made his of blessed memory now. I think he passed on last year. He has talked and talked. No, no. And you know he has a voice uh, because he's older than your father. So he has to say, I tied the mantle on her neck. So let's go. We went around since after another service. I know when you come to Wally, you must have a service. <laughs> and then we went. From the gate, I was waving it like this. You know why you can't do that stupid thing? You don't have a dare need. <laughs> Power work for those who are thirsty for science and wonder. Yeah. It doesn't work for those who are comfortable. Waving him it. And then we enter the house. We, we're seated like we don't know what he will say. But I told my wife, he's must. The, my mantle is in my hand. The mantle that I was giving to that city on my tie. When a man of God wants to pray for you, make sure you wear something and note them. You don't even need to tell them. You are the one who know. The woman said in her heart. He didn't tell Jesus. So I put my tie on and we went to the house. When the man came out, he just changed. Oh, how are you? How are you? He talked, he talked, he talked. Ah, no, 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 I will be there. And if I can't make it, I will send my wife. He never remember all the things he was to ask me. <laughs> if somebody can tell you there is nothing a man to leave him. He doesn't have a need. I will ever remember what to lose said. If you are not coming for my background, you understand my prayer. my kind of problem. That's why you are joking. He didn't manage to come, but he sent his wife. Give them a card. They attend. You can say man who doesn't work. When you see one of our elders, you find out from him. When auntie, whatever they call it, auntie, auntie bank something, were to jail him. In Kenya here. Here. Huh? Anti something bank fraud. They were out for him. He came to the house in the morning and says, Sir, they are coming today. I said, Okay. So they, he said, they, they, Well, uh, if I don't make it to serve, they are supposed to pick me today. I said, Now that you have seen me in the morning, they can't pick you again. And I entered my house and took my tie. You know, some of you are too intelligent. <laughs> you are too educated. That's why Satan is playing knowledge with you. We don't joke with knowledge. He know all the Bible, but he was never given power to use any. Huh? <laughs> he knows the Bible, but he was not given power to use any. The bread is for the children. I gave him the tire. I knot it. I said, put it on. Be going. They just dismissed the case. Till today. They dismiss what? The case. The case. Till today. Nobody pick him everywhere, but even he was in the service. Have you seen somebody who arrested snake before? You can't be subtle in a divine way and people joke with your life. Today, power is coming on you. Amen. Take your time. I don't say don't doubt it, but to erase your doubt, get a material on that subject. Lay none of hands. Communion table. Get it. You say anointing doesn't work. I won't answer you. When you see Pastor Daniel, you ask from him. <laughs> when you see Pastor Daniel, ask from him. Like every one of us, how naughty he was. The sister is here. He wrote his name and was crying, praying. I was there. And then put it inside the oil. And say, as this oil is soaked with the... Well, as this paper is soaked with oil... Let the power of God soak the life of my brother. From nowhere, he carried his baggage from the village. I said, my father, write, write a letter for me. The father said, to do what? So I'm going to meet, I'm going to live with the pastor and his wife. No communication. Who told you there is a distance between, for God? He's omnipresent. The father said, no. I won't let you spoil the relationship between me and my and my in-law with your character. He passed, he passed the father. Right, okay, let me write. I didn't read the letter today. He came to that house. I never preached to him. It was our, our staff pastor who preached to him. He got saved. See where he is today. Please don't join them. 
you see, to, for you to say rod can't walk, ask Moses. You, people who doubt you all this ordinances, they don't have problem. So you are the one who has problem convincing them. You, are the, you see, a woman that is not pregnant, you say he should remove his clothes. He will not answer you. But let night day reach. <laughs> let nine month reach. Ah! He's the one calling people. <laughs> a woman that is not pregnant, you say she should not do guy and wear clothes. They wear one, they tie one on the neck, they tie one on the waist, leave her. When she's pregnant and nine months reach, he can deliver in the presence of the whole nation. And it will not be called a taboo. There is a grace. Nobody is looking at her wickedness. Everybody is excited about the baby coming. So you are wasting your time, Christian. Oh, the name of Jesus. Oh, Mantu. Oh, Kamino. All these things I've mentioned to you, I have practical testimony of them in my life and as I carry out the work of ministry. It's a dawn of a new day. Amen. As we get set to anoint ourselves right now, I want to give you a few examples. Starting with a man. Starting with Jesus. Let me start with Jesus. Just to mention about the ordinances. I've given my own. Let me mention Bible 1. When Jesus yielded himself to fasting, what did he return with? He returned with power. I will just be giving you Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, and then verse 14. After Jesus yielded himself to the Holy Ghost to be led to the wilderness, and he fasted for 40 days, verse 14 say, and he returned with power. You talk about anointing oil. The first one I mention is prayer and fasting. First Samuel chapter 10. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 to 2, 9 to 10. Then you talk about Saul. How can you tell Saul that anointing oil doesn't work? He won't listen to you. You can be arguing. He will remember how the father house was lost. And they were searching for it. But after he was anointed, the, the, the ass was not just only recover. You know the rest of the story. Saul, who was a humanity before the anointing, came in contact with prophet and began to prophesy. The impact of the anointing oil that was poor on his head. Change his humanity to divinity. He began to operate like a prophet without going to the school. Saul was empowered to function among the prophet. From now by this oil, contract businesses that are not even in your line. You will win the tender and perform it very well. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will come in the midst of stranger and you will prevail. Tribalism will no longer limit you. Nepotism will not limit you. You will have it as you desire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Saul was empowered. I want me to give one example more. David. The same Samuel. In, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. Took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Remember, he's not the firstborn. What age has denied you? Anointing will make it happen. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. When the spirit of God came upon Jesus, Jesus is the last example. When the spirit of God came upon him in, Ju uh, in Luke chapter 4, verse 17, we all know what happened. He said, and there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah the prophet. And when he has opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the, to the captive 
and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised all the thing mentioned here was there anyone Jesus didn't perform he opened the eyes of the blind he brought comfort to the widow he set a woman that was brought in adultery he set him free anointing as oil come on your head today because I'm engaging very many of them especially prophecy I'm engaging them right now but before I do that you desire empowerment you must be born again you must be born again the first requirement is for you to become a child of God and then God will empower you and you will rule and reign despite the presence of enemy around you if you want Jesus in your life I want you to invite him right now as you say this word after me Lord Jesus thank you for today thank you thank you for bringing me in contact with this uh, broadcast I am a sinner but today I come unto you I ask you Jesus come into my life I believe in your walk on Calvary that you die and you rose for and you rose for me Jesus wash me and cleanse me from my sin and make me one of you and give me the power that I require to live a meaningful life thank you faithful father if you have prayed that prayer right now I want you to know what you have done now have eternal consequence in the sense that it's going to bring you to another level of life but you must grow in it that's why I recommend you look for a Bible believing church and go there around your neighborhood irrespective of the nation where you are and if you can see traces online I can still guide you but you will never remain the same Lord thank you for what you have done for your son as you pick us also from our sins and trespasses and have anointed us to do what we are doing right now do more in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ thank you faithful father in Jesus precious name praise the Lord it is time for the anointing and I will be praying over your oil the rod in the hand of Moses was an ordinary rod but after a holy conversation on the rod it became the rod of God every oil presented before the Lord I declare they become a holy anointing oil in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. by this oil yes, you shall be empowered Amen. you will become relevant Amen. there was no one that carried the oil that was in the hiding God said you are the light of, of your wall in your field of endeavor Amen. begin to shine in the name of Jesus Amen. this oil is blessed in the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit the substance inside that you are about to, no matter where you are, no matter the nation, <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. Mail can be sent to you, to you if I know your email. It doesn't matter your location. I know the email of your destiny. God is the giver of that destiny. He lives on your inside so I can reach you in your nation. And therefore I declare that oil in your hand today is the beginning of your empowerment in a dimension you have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ <laughs> whatever has not been working before after you are anointed today it will begin to work for you you will work in honor and in royalty when David came from the bush all his brethren, they were on their feet. He was anointed and distinguished. He became the king in Israel. He bypasses all bureaucracy. He broke traditions. Today, as this oil come upon you, every tradition that has been the gate of your limitation is hereby broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Tradition that you are not one age, that's why you can't build a house. Tradition that you can't get married because of ABCD. Right now, by this anointing, 
you are leaving that realm of humanity Amen. to the realm of divinity. Amen. Go forth and achieve what next phase of your life Amen. that you are due for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That affliction in your body that take a portion of your income after you have paid your tithe, it is not correct. Amen. The rebuke, the, the devourer of your life by today anointing is here by rebuke in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Every intended harm, every ongoing harm, every future harm over your life that has been configured by hell is hereby broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he said, by the reason of anointing, every yoke shall be destroyed. Yoke is a limit, is a limiter of men. I decree today, every limitation over your life is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That document you want in that nation, you will get it. Amen. You will get it. Amen. I prophesy, Joseph needed no paper to reign and to live happily in Egypt. I decree every documentation that you needed to be, to, to be able to walk in that nation. You will find favor. You will get it. Amen. You will find favor. You will get it. Amen. You will find favor. You will get it. Amen. From the day the oil came over David, he never returned back to the bush. He was straight to the palace. Amen. I command onward movement in your destiny. Amen. I command onward movement in your destiny. Amen. No more retrogressive movement in your life. Amen. Be progressive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are not returning to shame. Amen. You are not returning to decadence. Amen. You are elevated by this anointing. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I call for promotion. Amen. In the midst of this corona, you shall be promoted. Amen. You shall be lifted. Amen. You shall be lifted. Amen. And about all, by today anointing, you will fulfill destiny. Amen. You will fulfill destiny Amen. in the name of Jesus. Take a drop on your palm and say after me, Father, Father. And say it louder, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, by today anointing, I am anointed to function on earth and have my place in eternal life. By today anointing, I overcome every human limitation. My humanity will no longer prevail. My divinity is hereby established. I will do as I desire. Places will no longer determine my outcome. My anointing shall prevail. My empowerment of today will bring me to limelight. I will find easy passage in the journey of life. Thank you, faithful Father. Place it on your forehead and begin to pray in the spirit. Pray over your life. By this anointing, I have a change of position. By today anointing, I have a change of position. I am empowered. I'm empowered to rule in the midst of my enemy. My hand is on the neck of my enemy. By today empowerment, all oh, I see enlargement. I enter into a new level of ministry. By today anointing, I enter into a new realm that have not been able to assess in ministry, in ministration, in counseling, in leadership. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. By today anointing, you enter into a new realm. Amen. A new realm of life. Amen. A new realm of ease Amen. in business, Amen. in raising your children, Amen. in offering leadership Amen. in the family front. Amen. Shame has no traces of you anymore. Amen. Today anointing makes you invisible Amen. to the world of darkness. Amen. So shall it be. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? 
Come and put your hands together. As we sing a few times, higher, higher, every day. I lift my Jesus higher. Make it faster. I lift my Jesus higher. Rise up at home and dance. Celebrate. in the journey of life. Every baby should be anointed. And I heard God say, there is someone with a baby. And they said the kind of disease that your child has is to be managed for the rest of, her life, of his life. But I heard God saying, by today anointing, I'm reversing that verdict. I'm revising that verdict. That child, I don't know where you are, which nation you are. He's going to prove the medical world wrong. That all power belongs to God. It is established in the name of Jesus Christ. That child from today, mark it. He will begin to do what he cannot do before. Every record written concerning that child has been changed afresh in the name of Jesus. Lord, receive all the glory. Thank you, faithful Father. In 
Jesus precious name. Once again, thank you all of you. I'm so excited. Celebrate your power. Celebrate your power. Celebrate your empowerment. Celebrate a new order in your life. Thank you, Father. Amen. It is now time for financial empowerment. It is offering time. You have met it, people of God. Amen. Offering time for today, we say financial empowerment. Okay, okay. Offering time. Financial empowerment. Amen. Amen. And Second Corinthians chapter eight and verse number twelve confirms this. He says, "For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not." Today is a covenant day of empowerment. And in every covenant, there is always a willing heart. God's servant spoke about terms of reference. One of the terms of reference in every covenant is willingness to enter into that covenant. That's right, that's right, that's right. Covenants are not forcible. Covenants are agreements that are entered into willingly and the bible has said here and it is accepted according to that a man hath you have the right to reject the covenant and the right to accept it and in this case we are entering into a covenant with god a covenant of financial empowerment and it is you to enter into this covenant willingly and God has the right to accept or reject it. Wow. I think this one, the agreement is between you and God. We, we can't know what, what you and God are agreeing this morning. Because in this financial empowerment, what you require to do, the terms of reference are your tithes and your offerings. And it has said, uh, uh, I'll continue, and that it is according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not if you don't have don't say god understand it is according to what you have doesn't matter the volume doesn't matter the amount it is according to what you have not what you don't have so now i want you to prepare what you have today is our covenant day of empowerment people of god remember and it is every man and woman's desire to be financially empowered. So take advantage of today and get into this teaching and prepare a good offering for the Lord, a worthy offering for the Lord. And also, if you are paying your tithe, get set. Let's pray over it. Father, in the name of Jesus, today is our covenant day of empowerment. Lord, we desire to be financially empowered. We have come before you with our offerings and with our tithes, willingly. Accept them, Lord. Lord, use them for the advancement of your kingdom. And just like your servant has prayed, Father, cause us to be empowered today. Cause us to be financially empowered today. Let none of us lag behind in the name of Jesus. And let not any disease eat our money. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our details are uh, keyed uh, on the screen. Uh, you can use our pay bill. And uh, if you're using a bank, transfer. All the details are keyed there. Please make sure you key them correctly and pay your tithe and offerings correctly. If it is a tithe, please just mention their tithe. If it is an offering, just mention their offering. Pay bill is 140019. It is in the, on the screen, I believe. Amen. And also, uh, pay close attention to the following announcements. Uh, we have the second service today uh, at 4 p.m. That is when we'll be breaking our fast and we'll be closing our fast of the seventh month. And the Sunday school, min school ministry invites parents the children and teenagers to join the Sunday school and the teens 
service via the Zoom app after this very service. Empowering your week, Morning Glory live stream service will hold this week. That is uh, tomorrow, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.45 a.m. to 6.45 a.m. And that is East African time. Join us on Thursday in our Dominion service and time is 5.45 p.m. East African time. Join us next Sunday in our Power Pack morning service and time is 8.30 a.m. And that is also East African time. The Lord God bless you mightily. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a great day. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is well with all of us Amen. in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just look at time. We have roughly four hour, 30 minutes or more. Please don't use this hour to roam around. You have begun very well. Just use it to spend time bruising our browsing over your phone make some prayer points some of the prayer you have document quickly reverse them so that as we come in the evening it will be a shorter journey for you to begin a new season in the name of Jesus Christ if you want to sleep, sleep rest but don't sleep everything praise God make sure you offer some prayer maybe there are, there are some we have no area we have not touched maybe for your parent, whatever happened to them has a way of affecting you. Praise God. And remember to pray kingdom advancement prayer also. Pray for people you know that have trouble. Pray for the church. Pray for me. Pray for all the servants of God. And pray against coronavirus. Praise the Lord. And as you do that God of heaven will reward you more. In Jesus precious name. Let's share the goodness. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord God of heaven, he will give us grace and glory. No good thing will live with hope from us as we walk uprightly. We are ready to dominion, to honor, and to dignity. Amen. God bless you. See you in the evening. Be blessed.